Be sure to check out my store for the stuff I use and templates at a low cost, and get my everything pack so you can have everything in my store at a reduced cost, less than $20 if you tweet it out. What's up guys, Quezzy here bringing you guys another tutorial. Uh, this one's going to be a hexagon style header that I just created like earlier this morning and I was like, I could do a tutorial on this uh, since it's nothing I'm going to be using. I was just kind of messing around in Photoshop since I haven't really played around in Photoshop in a few weeks or so because um, of school and whatnot, but um, this is going to kick off this idea, idea I have for Christmas, which is like the 10 days of Christmas, a tutorial every day from the 16th to the 25th, and this is hopefully going to be the first one I'm going to be trying to upload every day to get 10 tutorials. This is like the third one I'm recording though, so I need to get seven more, so I don't know how this is going to go down, but this is what we're going to be creating, and yeah guys, let's jump right into it. Hopefully you guys think this is pretty cool. Um, we can change the colors and stuff, and it looks pretty cool, so let's go ahead and get started. So I'm going to be doing a Twitter header. You can do a YouTube banner or whatever you want. Um, do I not have this stuff saved? I don't. So I'm just going to kind of create my Twitter header here. And I'm going to do 3000 width by 1000 height. 72 resolution, let's create. And maybe I should have done 300 resolution. Is that different? No, okay, whatever, we'll roll with this. Let's double click the background, um, just click OK, and then Command I to make it white, unless your background's already white, and you should be good. Um, you can see uh, one thing that I want to mention before this starts is this background is a stock that you're going to have to download in the description. It's actually not really a stock. It's whenever I see something cool that I want to try to figure out how to do, I only screenshot it. And this was just happened to be one of those things. I don't even know where it got it from, so I can't credit the person who created it or whatever. But uh, you're gonna have to download that. That's about it. Um, but yeah, let's just jump right into it. So the first thing you want to do is create the hexagon. We're kind of we're gonna create a bit of a hexagon pattern. And I want to start off with like a darker green. So I'm just gonna select this the code is 3 3e 6b 30 if you want to copy mine and we're going to go down here to the rectangle tool and go to the polygon tool uh, i might say something else but you want to get the polygon tool fill you want it to be that green no stroke and you just want to well you want to make sure there's six sides and i'm going to zoom in here and click hold shift and I'm gonna actually is this not gonna let it straighten it? There we go. And we're gonna do something like about this size, that works. And let's right click and rasterize this. Now we just wanna create some sort of pattern evenly spaced. So I'm just gonna duplicate one, drag it over, maybe move it a little closer. Select both of these, duplicate, move them down and over. That pretty evenly spaced, maybe bigger gap, eh, like right there. Let's duplicate one of these, move it over. There we go. And uh, I try to not create one that's symmetrical, so I'm gonna duplicate these and bring it up like so. And I'm not sure how this is gonna turn out. You might take a while to play around with the pattern to get something you you like. Um, let's duplicate two of these. Bring. One over here. And let's duplicate one of these and create like sort of a missing hole. So this one kind of fills in. Actually, maybe we can even add to that and put one here. Actually, right there. Create some cool pattern like so. And let's try to get another. Where is it? Is this the three in a row? No, that's not even close. And let's do something like, actually, let's go the other way. You can see uh, I'm just kind of messing around here. There's no real uh, right way to do this. You just want to kind of create something that looks cool. And this looks pretty cool. So let's go ahead and group it all. Actually, we'll just merge it all. Command E to merge. Command T and we'll rotate this a little bit to get something funky. Uh, actually let's rotate 30 degrees so the edges are flat 
So we have something like this now, and then let's rotate like 15, maybe a little more, like 17. And we'll bring this over here. Um, ooh, one thing I forgot to do is, let me step back before I merge. Um, you kind of want to pick out some of these layers and darken some and lighten some. So I did two and two. So let me just pick this one, Command U, darken it. Let's go here, Command U. We'll lighten this one. Command U, darken. Command U, lighten. Now one. Where is? Give me this bottom left one. There we go. Lighten. There we go. Now we can go ahead and merge these. 30 degrees, 15. You could just do 45, I don't know why I didn't, I'm an idiot. Then we wanna hit enter, and then let's duplicate this with the command J. Alt click to make it a clipping mask. And let's just drag these over. And this is kinda of where you can start playing around with things. So I'm gonna move these over, to kinda of create different color variants in there. Do it again. This time move it over here, do it one more time, bring it to the top, something like this. This just adds a bit more color and things. Let's duplicate it one more time, bring it somewhere here, and set that to an overlay. And where should we do this at? We'll do it like right here. We'll actually clipping mask that too, just in case for the background sake and we'll duplicate this one one more time let's command T it this time though bring it back and sort of line everything back up but this time we're gonna uh, shift alt and shrink it hit enter command U and bump up the lightness something like that and then we can place this wherever we want maybe like right there and then let's go to the original layer, double click on it, add a drop shadow. And ooh, let's see if I can remember the settings that I use. Let me actually go pull up the settings for this one real quick. Um, I did this one in the group. So 36% opacity, 13, 14, 8. Eight. And then this was 54. Oh, that looks a lot better. So there are the settings if you want to copy them. I'm going to click OK here. And I'm going to select everything that we see here and duplicate it with Command J and bring it up here so we get a little bit in the corner. Just to diverse, make it a little, little bit more diverse. And actually, I want to select this and maybe bring it down a bit. How far can I? Yeah, we'll go about here. I'm just trying to think of where we're going to actually put the name when the time comes, but this is all right. Now, let's go to the very bottom layer and create a new layer. Go to the rectangle marquee tool and let's just create a pretty thick rectangle like so and then uh, command delete that'll fill that bar but since my background color is white I got a command D to deselect and then command I to inverse it so now we have black and let's get the eraser tool and just erase like half of it like like so duplicate that bring one towards the bottom duplicate it again uh, command T right click flip horizontal and do something like this then we can duplicate that make it a little thinner put it like this is just kind of messing about with uh, this will add just a little bit of a background texture and we'll just move these around you can see it just kind of playing with things you can go ahead and move these later on let's actually flip this guy bring it over here oops all 
All right, so we created a bit of a pattern here. Let's go ahead and uh, group everything that we just created and let's command T and rotate it. Actually, that was a bad rotation. Let's rotate it so it's kind of with our uh, hexagons, something like that. And then we can duplicate it and bring it down to add bits to the corner, like so. And then we'll just select all these and group them together. And we're gonna knock down the opacity to about five. And let's actually hit Command D to merge all these. Go to Filter, Blur, Gaussian Blur, and do about 14. Click OK. You can see this is just gonna be a subtle background now, uh, which will look pretty cool. Now let's go to the very top. We'll create a new layer, soft brush, hit D on the keyboard to get black and white. Let's bump the size down a bit and even more probably. Um, so I'm about at 700. I'm gonna use a black brush and just go toward, go uh, straight across the bottom. Then create a new layer and do the same thing with white at the top. And this is something I do on every banner. I'm just gonna decrease the opacity, about 25 on the white, and probably even less on the black. Around 10 on the black. This kinda, I don't know, I like what this always adds to the banner. Uh, the dark uh, bottom and the bright top, I just think that looks right. Now let's go to the bottommost layer and let's get that stock I was telling you about earlier, which is this thing. No idea where I got it. I don't know if it has a watermark on it or what. But we're just going to bump up the size so that these funky things are in on either side. Hit enter, right click, rasterize, and we're going to uh, command, um, command I to inverse it. Then command U to bring the saturation all the way down. Click OK. And above that group 2 where we created these um, sort of diagonal lines, we want to go ahead and add a solid color and pick our green here. Click OK and set that to, what is it? Set that to color burn. And you'll notice this is a little ridiculous, so we just want to drop down that stock's opacity to about 20%. We get something like this. We can also drop the opacity of group two which is like the lines and stuff you could drop that to like three that looks a little better all right now the, the screen looks a little gross so let's kind of fix it up a little bit let's first all uh, first of all first of all add some curves and we're just going to bring the bottom down a little bit to darken it and then bring this up to lighten it and then let's go ahead and grab a hue and saturation bump up the saturation just a bit and then let's kind of change the color, something we like. Sort of like this blue. And also one mistake that I think I made was making the original polygons a little too dark. So I'm just gonna go in on here and command U and bump it up a uh, plus 10. That's a little bit better. And then finally, we want to go ahead and add some text. So let's create a new layer and grab the rectangle marquee tool and just pick a spot you want the text. So I'll just do it right here, create a box. And then let's get the eyedropper, select the blue that we want uh, the box to be interlinked with. So I want, I want this blue right here. Click OK, grab the paint bucket tool, fill it in. And oh, I gotta take this off real quick. And now select it, put this back on, and now we can fill that in and it'll be the right color. Now what I did was Command T and then Command click this point, drag it out a little bit, and then drag this point down to create something like a shape like that, which is pretty interesting. And then I grabbed the text and added it in here. Tutorial, I'm using Gotham Bold font. Bump this up. 
put it right there and voila that is basically the tutorial guys uh, maybe I could bump up the saturation a little bit I don't know that's basically it though so hopefully you guys enjoy this tutorial it's pretty simple but I think it's a pretty wicked looking uh, banner and like the hexagon effect looks pretty cool um, but yeah guys, thank you for watching this tutorial. If you enjoyed, please drop a like. At 100 likes, I will include this file in the description for you guys to download um, and use. Also, be sure to subscribe for more tutorials. I'm going to be, obviously, like I said, doing 10 days of Christmas, uploading every day over the next 10 days. Uh, but yeah guys, be sure to subscribe, follow me on Twitter, at Quezzy, and I'll see you next time. Peace.